yeah, thanks for coming along tonight, everybody. Um, yeah, it's great seeing a few sort of uh, younger faces, I guess, from what we're usually used to. But um, so I, I, um, I just want to talk a little bit about you know the background of, of Stolen and how we got into it, and and, and then about networking and and about fundraising in particular. It's it's kind of a common thing people ask uh, me about the whole time. So I, th I thought that could be interesting to share. For those of you um, so who don't know, we, with my business partner Roger, we have a company called Stolen Rum. And um, my background, I was a, a lawyer in, in London uh, for sort of four or five years. And I, I worked on the trading floor for a large American investment bank. And I was pretty over it creatively. So I, I, I gave my job up, came back to New Zealand. and. It's really, really hard to, to get a job at the time. So with, with Roger, we decided on pursuing this rum, this rum dream. And a, a little bit of background to that, we, the idea behind Stolen Rum was uh, to really bring the, the sort of romanticism and history of rum to a new market. Uh, we both worked in bars sort of across the world. And in, in New Zealand, rum has a very, very sort of a bogan you know, uh, <laughs> re reputation. And what was interesting going overseas, particularly New York um, and LA and London, was that rum was this really amazing spirit with, with a, a, an amazing history, a, a very dark underbelly. And it, was, it was really a romantic drink and we felt that there were no brands out there that really sort of spoke to our, our generation and our mates. Certainly no one drank rum. Roger and I were the only guys. And we said, look, wouldn't it be great to um, have a brand that actually spoke to some you know, younger audience? So, so the background behind Stolen, we were back in New Zealand in 2009. And it, it, sort of deep in the recession, Roger uh, uh, invited me to his one-bedroom apartment, which we uh, <laughs> shared. I was in a, a, a one-bed in the lounge. Um, <laughs> and... That's sort of where we formulated the ideas, and, and that's probably the first point is I've learned is having, having your idea to, to start something, it's really, really important to have that, that passion, and when you've got nothing else going on at the time, it's very, very easy to throw yourself into it. But I think, I think the, the point is for anyone wanting to start their own business is you have to have that attitude of nothing to lose, and I mean, we didn't, and we were kind of lucky as it turned out, but... If you can kind of manufacture that, it's harder leaving a job and you know starting something. So I think it worked in our favour. So uh, we, you know, long story short, Roger uh, looks after the product and the design, everything to do with the product development from uh, logistics production and what it looks like. Um, he's got a fantastic palette. Go and see him at the bar later. He'll tell you all about rum. He um, and I deal with the sales, marketing, uh, finance, and legal, and we both kind of steer the ship of the of the business. Um, we've been in the market for about 16 months and we have about 200 bars and restaurants on board. We've just struck up a distribution deal with a company called Beam Global. Uh, they're the fourth largest spirits company in the world. And that's just for New Zealand, so it gives us a helping hand. We're not sending boxes of rum out from the office as we have been for the last year or so. Um, and, and it also gives us a, a credibility to you know, go to Australia. Um, we're looking at Sydney and Melbourne currently, and it, it just gives you a foot in the door of, hey, these guys are working with this sort of distribution company. So, um, you know, lessons from that, prove your idea, and then, you know, go out and, um, and, and really go for it. And, and people do come to you, people are always watching. And that kind of leads me to the, to the funding side of things. Oh, another couple of things about the, the product. We, uh, both products have picked up, there's a, there's a gold and a white rum. And they both picked up medals in the San Francisco Spirits Contest, which is the sort of top spirits contest in the world. And we've also, um, yeah, got our first bar on in Sydney this week. So that's really, really cool. Um, and j just before funding, actually, talking about networking and relationships, um, you know, what Catherine said is very, very true for us as well and, and for Hamish. You know, everything we've done is based on relationships. So the whole time, you know, Roger and I started off selling rum out of a briefcase to, to bars and building those relationships the whole time, knowing who's in the industry. And I think the most important thing was that 
you know, when networking for me, you know, I, working in a large investment bank in London, everything was, networking was kind of a shmami thing to be doing, you know, it was about, you know, guys in bad fitting suits with name tags and, you know, it was, it was kind of, it was kind of weird and um, there was all this catch cry at Bank of America called, called Reach Out, it was always like, reach out to Sean, you know, and it was, that, it was, but that, it felt really unnatural, so I think, I think the thing with networking is that you, you meet people who you genuinely, you know, get along with and and you have similar values, mindset and goals and that person may or, you know usually knows a lot more about you or has expertise in an area. But I think the big thing is about it's just meeting like minded people who you get on with, share stories, values and, and click with and you exchange information. So yeah, that was a big part of, of building our business. But just to talk about funding because as I said um, a lot of people do ask about that. We uh, put all our own money in for a start, which kind of got us to, to market. Um, I had a product and we sold our first couple of bottles, right? So, and then after that, we, you know, an alcohol company is a hungry beast. We need a lot more money to, to grow the brand, um, grow products, that sort of thing. We, we took the idea of a, a public offering. For those who don't know, a, a public company will sell shares to a number of people in the public and you own a slice of that company. And we kind of took that model, shrunk it, and said, look, if we can sell this idea or this dream to friends, family, we'll have maybe 35 shareholders. But not only that, you have 35, and we have 38 at the moment, people that are, that are brand advocates for your brand, and they, they build those networks for you. So again, all about networking. Um, and that's what we did. We, we raised money that way. So you know, 10, 20,000 chunks, which is a lot of money. And for some people, not as much. So we had, you know, 35 of these people putting money in. And, and that's the way we funded things. And, you know, um, we, we've had a lot of good advice along the way. And, and Jeff Ross has been particularly helpful, who um, funded 42 Below and has a company now called Akoya. And Jeff, you know, said it's, and I, you've heard it before, is that it's better to have a small part of something big than a big part of something small. So it's always hard to give away that that equity, and it's not something you, you want to do early, but you know you do need to think. If you're thinking big, which which we are, we our sort of ambitions um, for the future, obviously, are Australia initially, um, uh, London, which we know fairly well, and then New York, Spain. It's about picking up cities. I think that's kind of where we're at. But you do need a lot of money for that, and you know it's about getting as much money as you can at the point where you really want to put the the throttle down. Um, so that, that's kind of how we funded it, really, and we are getting money in now, that sort of thing, but there will be other capital raisings to come along the track. And to that extent, you know, the, the networking with Kiwis has been really, really great. And what's amazing are the number of Kiwis out there in London, in New York, which is what I've had most of the dealings with, who are doing really amazing stuff, but you don't, you don't hear about them. They're not, they're not big names. So I think the thing with care or any type of networking is just asking those questions. Does someone know someone who knows someone? And New Zealand being so small, someone always knows someone who knows someone that can help. And often you meet these guys and they're, they're running a 10 million pound company in London. You've, you've never heard of them and they're doing very, very well. So it's something to keep in mind that they're not always the big, the big stars out there. There's, there's people going about their daily business who are stars themselves who are very, very helpful. But um, in terms of particular networking, we've been lucky we're having Jeff Ross sort of um, helping out a little bit. Um, we met Kevin Roberts recently from CEO for Saatchi. That was just through kind of asking around a few people. Through Kevin, Kevin's put us onto a guy, Ian Abercrombie, who is a very, very old hand in the liquor business. He's come on our board of directors. Um, it's just an example of meeting someone. Kevin was great, you spend an hour with him, but hey, you've got to meet my friend Ian. Ian's this great guy, he comes into your business. So, there's always someone you meet through someone, and that's that's the that's the power with um, with, uh, with with Kiwis overseas. It's very 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 um very helpful. Um, so yeah, in, ter in terms of future for us, we as I said, first bar in Sydney on board this week, which is really really exciting. We uh, will put all our energies into Sydney, um, and a lot of that's going to be through you know pulling favours, um, maybe getting a flat. Uh, a, a room in a flat somewhere, spending two weeks over there, two weeks back. So 
we're just cobbling it together the whole time and building, building, building. So it just it's it's really worth um, yeah when you meet someone just always always pushing forward. It's really really been helpful. After that, as I said, London, um, Spain's a very very big rum market, and uh, and New York hopefully was where we'll um, end up and live happily ever after. But um, <laughs> you know. Um, or um, Spain, somewhere warmer. <laughs> so, but you know, thanks for coming along, and um, th thanks Hamish for setting this up tonight. Um, as I said, it's, it's really, really cool to see um, see a lot more young faces around. And and um, yeah, I'll be around. So, any questions, just, just give us a yell. And um, yeah, thank you.